And this whole thing can just slide straight out, just like that. If you've got one in the field and they sound a little bit like this. G'day legends, welcome back to Think List. And today I want to start a new segment where I break down some common electrical industrial components. And I wanted to start with this gigantic contactor contactor now i'm going to break it down i'm going to show you exactly how it works rip the whole thing apart but before i do that i just wanted to thank all of my subscribers over the last few months you guys have been so supportive the amount of comments and suggestions particularly for my react series has been awesome so i know i say this every time but if you wouldn't mind subscribing it really does motivate me to continue making these videos and this one is a little bit different and I'm super excited. So let's just get straight into it. All right, so here we have the contactor that I showed you before. And there's just a couple of things I wanted to note before we start opening it up. So the first thing is obviously this is a Sprecher and Shure. Shure, I don't know. I'm an Aussie, I can say it however I like, whatever. So this is the uh, catalog number, which is a CA6, which I believe is a discontinued model, but that's how I was able to get this one. So. And the 105 is actually uh, denotes the current rating of this contactor. So the contactor has a couple of other things noted on the front here. And one that you might want to take note of is the AC1 and the AC3. Now those are actually utilization categories. So AC3 is the most typical for squirrel cage motors. Although if you're using resistive loads, you're probably going to need to look or want to look at the AC1. But the vast majority of instances, you're going to be using AC3. And it's really important to note because that is what you need to size your contactor to. So for here, this one is only going to go up to 75 kilowatts for a three-phase installation over in Australia. That's going to be 415 or potentially 400 volts which is the a supposed voltage, but it's always 415. So those are things noted on the front, and there are also a couple of other things uh, that you might want to take note of. But as we go around the contactor itself, you can see that not only is there the, uh, the three phases, the three lines that come through this contactor that connect together, you've also got on the top here which is the coil connection which is drives that coil and brings in the contactor but also on the side here you've got another connection which is your auxiliary connection and usually you can stack a heap of these auxiliaries on top of each other and it's a mechanical sort of mechanism that links into the back of the contactor and I'll open it up uh, a little bit later um, but what that does is you might want to note to the PLC or something like that that the contactor is in and something might be running or something like that. You might want to interlock with it. So these are really, really handy when you want to use that for those sort of auxiliary instances. Um, but this one here, this particular contactor is actually dead. Um, I know that because I plugged it in and it didn't work. <laughs> but... We can see that the coil, I'm just gonna set my uh, multimeter here to ohms, and the coil reading was about, I think 37 Mega. ohms. Yeah, around that 37 Mega. Uh, and I should, typically I should be seeing around like the 5K ohms or something like that. So we'll be getting a ton of different current. But just for an exercise, um, if you've got one in the field and they sound a little bit like this. Yeah, means it's uh, broken. So what I might do is just uh, take this apart, take that off now. We don't need that. So I'm just going to take the coil connection out. Let's just pop that out and put that to one side. Okay, so these things are designed to be modular and be completely taken apart because, of course, they are expensive pieces of kit. They're for large industrial applications. So let's open it up uh, and see exactly what's inside. So this one has a couple of quarter turn little screws here that come in. Pretty similar for a lot of contactors. And as we take off the top, slides out really easily. We've got a couple of things here. I might 
might actually just start with the contactor itself. So here's the contactor and you can see these like the leaves that connect between the two uh, contacts here. So you've got the line side that comes down and when the, the coil pulls this in, it pushes down, pulls it in, and then it connects with the other load side here. So there's gonna be a ton of current, inrush current that hits those two bars and you can see the, um, the carbon buildup on these already. And that's actually a pretty good one. I've seen some really, really bad ones. Um, but the front bit here is actually what they call arc shoots. And apparently you can actually replace these, although I haven't before. And what that does, it just suppresses the arc. You've got these insulated uh, pieces of metal specifically designed to sort of suppress the arc because potentially you could be pulling in a shorted piece of equipment and you don't want this to blow off the front. So that's just what that is for. So let's just put that to one side. Now, you've got another couple of screws in the front here and that's gonna take off the body. But what I need to do first is actually remove this auxiliary contact because that's gonna prevent me from actually taking that off the front. So let's unscrew that. And that pops out and you can see that mechanical sort of mechanism that just links straight in to the auxiliary contact, pretty cool. All right, let's just go ahead and I'm gonna unscrew all these. Okay, so as we lift this off, we can see a couple of things here and I might just go with the front, I'm just gonna drop all these little screws out. So here are the two halves here that actually connect in and this is what pulls in. So here's your laminated iron core that links into your coil down here. So as you can see, it's usually stuck out and that is because of these springs that sit in the body. So the springs sit in the body and they always hold it out until it is engaged, the coil is engaged. So as you can see, that just comes straight in Boom, like that. Pretty cool stuff. So I might put that to one side. And as I mentioned before, you've got these springs that sit in there nicely just to pull it in. It's amazing just the small little components they put in these for such large amounts of uh, current. Okay, so I get to here and you can see the coil, but you really can't remove it unless you go through these bottom screws here. Now, the reason that they do this is because replacing the coil is actually quite common. It's something that does happen quite frequently. So they make it a little bit easier than having to pull apart the whole contactor itself. So let's just remove these screws. Okay, so you can probably pretend that this whole thing is back on and in if you were replacing this. Uh, but let's just lift this off and that would just sit to one side. And here you've got your whole coil. Now, typically you would actually just have this whole base replaced, although you can actually replace the coil itself. Um, but it's really, really simple. So it's a simple, just wrapped coil like that and creates a magnetic field that pulls in that iron core you saw before. And this whole thing can just slide straight out, just like that. So you might actually wanna replace this with maybe a DC 24 volt uh, coil for a different application. Um, all sorts of different coils that you can get for these, electronic coils as well. Uh, so that's essentially the whole breakdown of this actual contactor. So let's just put that back together now and see how long it takes me to put this whole thing back together. Let's do it. Oh, 
Done. Those little quarter turn things are an absolute nightmare. So that is it for the contactor breakdown. I know it's a pretty simple device, but honestly, it's pretty necessary and it's ubiquitous throughout the whole industrial industry. I mean, anywhere where you've got a motor, essentially, you've got a contactor. So it's pretty important to know how they work. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate if you could leave a comment below telling me exactly what else you would like broken down. I've got some really cool other things that I can show you that I would like to do, like actually cut them open and things like that. So if you're interested in that, let me know below. Otherwise, if you don't mind subscribing so that you don't miss any more of my videos so I can teach you more about electrical and the industrial industry. And before I go, I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but please just make sure that you're not playing around with any of your house voltages or any electrical stuff if you're not competent or licensed or anything like that. But until next time, guys, thanks very much for watching.